Yeah. It's from Beertho. Beerzo. 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 <laughs> Beerzo the clown. Mencia from Beerzo. <laughs> he hasn't got a working with children's check, but he's cheap. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. This is the Blind Tasting Show. We've got six, yes, six, we listen to feedback, six wines here to try. Three white, three red, and we're going to tell you what we think of them, how good we think they are, how much you should buy, how much they should cost, uh, just to give you an idea of what we really think of them. Now, uh, we have six wines, and we are trying to figure out what country they are from. Uh, and by the looks of things, we've got uh, a pretty varied colour spectrum, so... That really doesn't indicate anything. So let's find out. Maybe it's Burgundy. Wouldn't it be great to start with six Burgundies? Uh, but let's well, let's just taste the wines and let's not make any, any more premature judgments. Uh, also, please like and subscribe. Join the link below. Thank you to Different Drop for supplying all of these wonderful wines. Uh, and there is a link to get a nice little discount code if you want to try any of these wines at home. Gives a bit of kickback to the show and of course to the people at Different Drop. It's super supportive. Uh, and of course, yes, please like, subscribe, do the whole thing. Um, and Let's not lock around too much longer. Let's get into it. Sick. Awesome. Well, wine number one. Golden hued, fun, almost like if I were to look at this, I'd actually immediately go, hmm, uh, probably a sweet wine. Let's have a look. It's got some flinty mineral, reductive kind of qualities. It's got that kind of like Chenin Blanc smelling, like it's got laziness. It's got that kind of like custard apple, peach, like a stone fruit thing there. Love the mint, I love the mint, like flinty mineral thing that's going on. I was wrong. That's really interesting. That finishes like a butter menthol. It's got, so when I'm talking about that, you're looking for that sort of, you smell it on the nose and you go, ah, oh, this is gonna taste like that sort of flat, tightly wound white wine that's got that brioche complexion to it, but ultimately doesn't really please me on the palate. It starts off like that. It's got the brioche thing. But then the finish on it, it is like that, what are butter menthol? So they, they're just like sweet butter flavor. So it's a bit of sweet butter flavor. Savory edge. Mm, that nose is a little bit weird. I actually say that this may have been kissed by the cork, just the tiniest bit, maybe like 10%. Well, it's a cracking wine to start us off. Absolutely delicious, like steely, mineral, flinty. Doesn't have the acidity that I'd expect of something like Chenin Blanc, so it's kind of moving more to that Chardonnay realm, but definitely with a bit of work to it. I'm not getting too much crazy oak character. I'm not the biggest fan of this wine. It's a little bit, uh, I think it's what the, the kids these days say, weird. Um, so I'd probably drop around about 20 bucks a bottle on it, and I'd buy three bottles. I'm gonna take 12 and I'm going to pay $45. Similarly golden colour, but I now think we're moving more into like, it's more of like a Nick Rewalt circa 2011 hair colour as opposed to like that real, like I'm a surfer bro who also plays football and does coke with Ben Cousins, like West Coast footballers sort of hair colour. Uh, mm. Phenolic back palate, really high acid, slightly aromatic nose. And it's like, like when we say aromatic, we really mean these sort of lifted floral aromatics when we talk about an aromatic white wine. It's almost like sour, like the sort of sour lolly sort of, you start salivating a lot because you're compensating with whatever, however the fuck the human body works, but you're compensating for the sourness in your mouth by producing more saliva, apparently. That's what's happening when I'm drinking this Riesling. I've got a very um, wet mouth. I really like this. I'm gonna go six, because I think I'm really confused if it's bubbly or not. And if it's, if it's supposed to be a sparkling wine it's flat ish it doesn't have that great mousse and that great bead but if it also also if it's a uh, if it's a still wine it's got some like frizzante to it which is kind of interesting but i'm grabbing six food wine food wine a little bit creamy but also a little bit spicy which i know isn't a combination that we talk about too much something like uh yeah like a, maybe like a rose vodka chicken pasty <laughs> let's call that a 30 dollar bottle of wine and i'll have three so far might be going back to 12 on wine number one because i wasn't as thirsty for that one as i was for the first. moving on to wine number three uh very golden almost orange hued um diacetyl uh, so stressed malolactic ferment, which gives a real sort of buttery edge and not buttery oak, buttery like, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say rancid butter, because that's not exactly uh, true either, but diacetyl is almost like banana skin butter. I love the tannin here, really like tight, structural, but not too overbearing. It's got some really fantastic like frame to this like really lovely silky palette shape that I really quite enjoy. It's got really good acidity too, like great acidity. Super refreshing, very, very delicious. It's, it's not the height of heights of orange wine, but it seems like a really good like afternoon little staple of the style, but it's really good. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Oh, uh, this, uh, this 
honeycomb vodka really tastes like honey and then you taste it and you're like, I see what you mean, but like, have you had honey? Like, it doesn't actually taste like honey, but there's just like that little element in there that makes you think, oh yeah. Much lower acid. So really interesting, these three wines have gone from like a, a medium acid to like stupidly high to actually quite low, um, like very, very low. And, um, and that's probably indicative of the uh, malolactic fermentation that's occurred within the wine. Uh, I feel like it's also got maybe a little bit of age. Eight bottles, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go $42. Uh, magic number with inflation. Uh, but yeah, really, really solid style of orange wine. Like nothing ridiculous, but really, really well balanced and textural and fantastic. Wine number four, gone from whites to reds. Um, so I'm gonna spare you me comparing the different alternative Essendon Bomber jersey stripes that these three red wines look like color wise. Mm, Bitey, outrageously high acid uh, as well for a wine of this particular style. It's got some chew, got some tannin, got some acidity. I've um, got this like this briny olive thing as well. It might be, it feels Loire Valley esque. It's got that kind of stemmy, savory. I know it's, I said that it's probably not got whole bunches in it, but it tastes like it's got this like green, stemmy tannin to it as well. So maybe there's, this might be a fun little like Loire Valley blend. Could be Gamay. I'm thinking like Gamay, Grenache. -y. I'm, I'm going to go with Gamay. Which fits really well with my Germany guest because winemakers love alliteration. So a German Gamay, pff, fuck yeah. Not incredibly taken with it. Uh, seems to be a, a really odd um, thing of, you know, a decent amount of alcohol, but also a really decent amount of uh, acid. So ripe, but high acid. That really starts to nail down exactly where this potentially could be. Like it's just got, it's got enough vibrancy. It's got this olive tapenade thing. Could be Cote de Rhone as well. This has got this, yeah, it's very bright and juicy, but it does have, it, it's got a bit, of, it's got a little bit of bread. A little bit of bread, but I, 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 don't, I think there's enough here um, that it's like, you know, it's just part of the wine, doesn't overpower the wine. 40 bucks again, I don't know. Like I really don't have a um, finger on the pulse of the German wine market and how much it costs to import into Australia, but feels like $40. And does it up, son. Give me a dozen of them. Uh, let's go one number five. Number five, another bit deeper, deeper, darker red. Eyes closed, it vaguely smells like a cork, but it doesn't smell corked, it just, it smells like a winery, but great, uh, like the yellow barge is perfect, so it's not entirely primary, it is developed secondary tertiary as well. Wow, might not smell like much, but it tastes like a lot. Really big, full body palette. Great, vi like vibrant acidity, plum, like juicy, juicy plums, black cherries, great kind of rounded tannin. It doesn't feel like Italian et in its tannin profile. It does feel like kind of quite a tight, bunchy. We're also in a winery, so it could smell like nothing at all. Um, let's see. Doesn't, this is sick. Is really, really cool. It's almost like, there's something about a wine that doesn't smell like anything but then tastes great, where it's almost like a magic trick where the person's shuffling the deck of cards after you've already picked their card. Oh, high acid. Uh, this wine I would absolutely drop 40 bucks a bottle on and buy 12. I'm a big fan of this wine. Um, although I'm already starting to get a bit of an inkling as to where. It's delicious though. I'm getting 12 of that. I reckon uh, that'll keep well. I'm gonna go 50. I need to start Googling, before we shoot these, I need to start Googling like most obscure grape varieties to guess to impress your friends. That's what I wanna be doing. 30 bucks, I reckon this is cheap as chips, which suits me because that's why I want 12. Good on you, Germany, you've done it again. Uh, and wine number six, dense, deep, dark, rich, extracted. Back to the Amaro bit of herbs thing. Very similar to wine number four, the first red wine but denser, deeper, darker. Oh, this is it's like chocolate and coffee and butterscotchy kind of things. Prunes and figs and dates and stuff like that. So one thing that I refuse to do, I've recently, uh, there's been three things that have happened lately and they've led to me doing this a lot, right? And it's not me trying to get a weight staff attention. The three things that have happened is that I've been an advocate for the cabaret festival. I've started dating a cabaret artist and I've started watching RuPaul's Drag Race. And I've realized that the queer arts community fucking hate doing this but love doing this. And I refuse to do that about a wine, but if I wasn't refusing to do that, I'd be doing that shit. Anyway, it's yum, I like it, doesn't, bang. Fuck you, RuPaul, how dare you turn me into this clicking for fucking wine. Anyway, really high acid, red wine, full ripeness. Again, bipolar ripeness, full ripeness, high acid. Uh, we'll drop about 50 bucks a bottle on this and I'll buy three bottles. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna go, that's Chianti. I'm gonna go 12 because I love it. Uh, I'm gonna go 60 bucks and that's gonna make my guess Italy. 
Sangiovese. Let's let's do it. Six from six different wines. And just like the culture, art, and people of Germany, a diverse lineup of German wines. You see what the boys think. Gentlemen. Yes. We have, we have six wines here. Yes. Uh, what did we think of the wines? Oh, guys, wasn't a fan. Oh, man, I was overwhelmingly positive on these. Oh. I, 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 there was a bunch I liked. There was a bunch I didn't, but I liked it. I, like, I thought it was a pretty solid little, little lineup. There was ones that were better than others. There was no bad wines. I didn't find any bad ones. No, like nothing ones. inherently faulty. There was one that was a bit sketch, but um, I, I just, I just didn't enjoy them. It's the first bracket that I've had in a lot. Like, like we've been doing this a little while. Yeah. It's not very often that I'll go through six wines and really struggle to tease out one that I'll. You're generally the opposite. It's either like, it's either you're just like, man, I, got, I bought dozens of everything. And yeah. you just liked all the wines, but maybe not, just not today. Yeah, yeah, I bought a bunch of dozens, actually. I, I was really into some of them. I got three dozens. I got three dozens here. It was good. Overall, uh, we had a we had a, a goal and was to identify the country. Mm -hmm. Where did we go country-wise? Hopefully, hopefully an intellectual stab at this. It was either one or, one of two for me. It was either going to be South Africa, but then like the, the confirmatory thing in my head was this thing called bipolar ripeness. A lot of these have ripeness on the nose, but stupidly green acid on the palate, and I've only mm -hmm. ever seen that from Chile. Okay, okay. That's fun. Uh, I said Germany because the third wine, when I tasted it, I just like heard a big German anthem go off in my head. So I had, <laughs> I had an e equal I don't know what any of those sound like. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think with Germany, I think some of the reds could definitely be German, but the whites just are so would not yeah. what you would expect from Germany, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I went Italy um, just because there was enough savory interest, um, but mm -hmm. I could I could have erred between like Spain and Austria even mm -hmm. like across these. It was really interesting but mm. I don't mind Chile as a shout. Um, that would be definitely one to be brushing up on. So, well, Lockie, what was the country? Oh! Oh! Wow. So close. Wow. By border. Oh, that explains a lot on this wine. It's often referred to as the yeah, Germany yeah, of the okay. Mediterranean. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, I can see it now. Cool. Well, I reckon then this one is probably Albarino then, this first one. Yep. I wrote down Chardonnay as well. Yeah. I, it felt like Chablis-esque like style Chardonnay. It's mm. got a it, it, really unique finish on it. Like it, it tastes like a butter menthol on the way out for me. Like that really mm. sort of like sweet, buttery sort of thing, which is mm. as soon as mm. I have any sort of dairy product in a wine, I'm going Chardonnay, even if it's red. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thought it was 48 bucks. I said I wanted six, but in hindsight, I want 12 because I was just playing against the potential first wine of the day bias. Yeah, mm. true. No, I want a dozen. Yeah, I want a dozen this. I like the texture. I love the minerality thing. Love the use of batonage. I think that was delicious. Um, yeah, it was all about it. 20 bucks and three? 20 bucks and three, okay. you're Okay. Not, not a fan. But then again, you're not a fan of any of these. Not really. <laughs> Fuck Spain. Uh, Lockie? How much? Something that textual, textual vibe. Nachosa de Calua. Um, mm -hmm. I'm reading about Spanish wine right at the minute. Uh, Bro, you're gonna do a better job than me. I'm gonna wine. give a fucking what? Albarino? No, Palomino. Fucking Pino. Palomino. Fucking Palomino. The the world's most neutral grape variety. Mm. Just nothing. Uh, but that's been made quite deliciously. Um, cool. Do you think it was corked? It was kissed by it, but it doesn't seem so. Honestly, probably a little bit overpriced. Um, I wouldn't be spending sixty bucks in a bottle of Albarino. Uh, sorry, no, sixty bucks in a bottle of Palomino anytime soon. Uh, but but it's still very deliciously made. But if it was 20 bucks, I'd totally buy three. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if it was 20 bucks, I'd buy a dozen. Uh, but it's still a very yummy one. To quote the Italian chef on the British morning show, if my grandmother had two wheels, she'd be a bicycle. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Not helpful. We're gonna get into that sort of hypothetical, we'll be here a long yeah, time. Yeah, exactly, there's a long way to go. Number two. Um, dude, dude, it's gotta be, start with a T and an X. It's gotta be. You reckon it's Chackley? It's gotta be Chackley. Yeah, fair chat, fair chat. Yeah. Underripe, it's all, it could be fizz. It must be like nine, ten percent alcohol. Yeah, a hundred percent. It smelled kind of fizz. Yeah. I thought it just smelled like kind of sweet, so Riesling-y, sort of florally mm -hmm. yeah. sort of thing. High acid. Didn't like it. It was my least favorite wine in the lineup. This it, this is not the typical way. Well, let's find out what it is. Let's see if we're right or wrong. 35 bucks. I said 30. Half a dozen. Great. 25 and half a dozen. You know, if that was three dollars, I'd buy so much. <laughs> Jack. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. Jack. Well, good stuff. Jack, Jack. How this would be uh, typically consumed, though, is not in this. It'll be typically consumed culturally in a tumbler, and they would actually uh, have like a a cork style thing fitting that they put on the top and they'd actually pour it out, sometimes with their thumb over, um, uh, and splash it into the, the tumbler and release all the gas. Shit Air out of shit mm. out of so lucky, did you do that? Good. Alrighty, wine number three. Little skinsy number. 
like got a bit of tannin, got a, got a bit of grip, um, but I quite liked it. I think it was like nothing too crazy as far as orange wine is concerned, but it's such a food friendly wine that I really, I really quite liked it. Every fucking time we do this, I forget that orange wine exists. So I'm like, what sort of white wine is this? And it is the sort of white wine. That <laughs> I, I thought it was white wine. Oh, I, I cool. thought it was just a, a really like thick white wine, like Godello or something. Uh, I, I called it Alagotte because I was out in the dark. Uh, 20 bucks and one. <laughs> Oh my god, not even into it at all. Sorry. Uh, eight, eight bottles, 42. Eight, 42? Eight, 42. I quite, yes. I, I quite liked it. I think it's an awesome food friendly wine. It's origami. Yeah, I, de I definitely called it food wine. I wanted a uh, six for 40. Nice. nice. Actually, it smells beautiful now. Yeah, it's great. It's super mm. like orange citrus, really pretty, really floral. Liked it. Oh, I've seen these around. <laughs> Fucking how good's the label though? That's an amazing label. Um, that is a genuinely a thistle? Made, like beautiful, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. something like this. Uh, uh, gone. I mean, that'd have to be an orange wine, no doubt, with the orange label. Made in amphoras. Yeah. Suitable for vegans. Oh, we should have tried this one last week. Um, Must have a part. <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly sure too much about the. It doesn't really. It feels like an orange field blend in I can't amphoras. I see like regional. What about that so little tacky label on the side? Does that say anything? Nah, it's an import sticker. Shit. No, unfortunately. Um, I really like it. I think that's fun. I think it's playful. I think it's textural. I think it's really delicious. I quite Check enjoy that. It's a good pun. Uh, yeah, nice punt. <laughs> I've got a thumb. You do have it. For context, he has a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, not one thumb, two thumbs. Oh, yeah. Next one. A uh, little, like, you know, ready blend. Probably some kind of. Um, Oh, I don't even know. Kind of red wine uh, across from Spain. There's a whole bunch of different brands. Probably I thought, a Spanish red wine. Yeah. Well, I thought it was Cote de Rhone, so I just thought it was like a fun little uh, red blend. Um, but got a bit of Brett there. Got a bit of just neutrality. It was just a very uh, nah. mid wine. I immediately smelled it and I was like, oh, wow, it's Pinot because it had this like mm. deepness. It was really floral, earthy in taste. And I was like, oh, it tastes like Loire Valley. Mm. Like mm. it's like Cabernet yeah, Franc sort yeah, of Yeah, stemmy yeah. and weird. Mm. Never met Gamay in Spain. I don't believe so. Maybe we're about to find out. <laughs> Shit, well, I certainly hope they do. Anything. Uh, I wanted 25 and 1. Uh, I wanted 3 and 37. I wanted 12 for 40. I wanted a dozen of that. Oh, it's wow. delicious. Oh, yeah, it's good fun. All over the shop. 32. Well, it's good value. Bargain. It's good value. I'll Absolutely. I mean, that's what you Tell can you get. Tell you what, to. if that was $130 a bottle, I would buy it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's a good deal. Good deal. Good deal. I don't know why I keep looking at these. Like, I'm going to have to translate it. It's just the easiest place to. Menthea. This yeah. is Menthea. Like, you've, you've been one to be critical of Menthea. Yeah, but this we've, is why. Yeah, this yeah. is why. Yeah. We've, but we've also tried some other stuff in Australia that was like, oh, fuck Stunt. yeah, amazing. Yeah. So it's like, this is the kind of um, the spectrum spectrum right. you can get. You can like really easy drinking, like kind of silly, like, you know, just table wines. Or so you can get some really fine quality stuff. Yeah. It's from Bierzo. 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 <laughs> Bierzo the clown. Menthea from Bierzo. He hasn't got a working with children's check, but he's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Wine number five. Um, I, oh. really, I quite like this. Twelve. Dozen! Dozen! Hey! Oh, Queen sweet. Uh, well, a lineup. A lineup yeah. uh, in this one. I wanted to spend 40 bucks oh, on it. This I thought this is was gorgeous. Just, yeah. yeah. Very licious, ripe on the nose, great acid drive. It ticks so many boxes for me. I know I can mature it. I know it's probably got some maturation already. Hey, yeah. that is very good Grenache. Gun, gun I called it. Oh, yeah. really? I called That's fucking yeah. awesome. Go. Yeah, gun, gun. Garnacha. Garnacha. Uh, 100%. I also did say it was from Germany, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. yeah. what do we got here, Lucky? Oh! oh awesome. This is, this is up there. Guys. This is awesome. This is, this is the wine. How amazing. That's. It doesn't look like Grenache. It, Castilla y León, uh, so probably Grenache. Thank probably goodness. Grenache. Um, wow, this is. Fun. Get that fucking crown, bro. By the way, that's yeah. fucking. <laughs> I don't deserve I don't know if it. I deserve it. Uh, for thirty-five dollars, that is delicious. What a stonking wine. In Bebo import, yeah. um, so probably really, Good really point. well made. Like probably really good mm. uh, farming. There's a lot more. There's a lot of. Um, organics and biodynamics in Spain because it has the climate for it. It's nice and hot. Um, but that is delicious. That is super yummy. I'm gonna, oh, I want that. That's, that's a wine. That is super, super yummy. That is such a wine. Number six. Uh, I personally like this as one of the week. I thought this was delicious. Love the kind of like savory, like figgy prune tertiary mm. thing. When you drink it, it's like bright and fresh and it's got good acidity, it's got structure. Um, I initially called it uh, Chianti Sangiovese, but then as it kind of, I was like, oh, well, if now it's Spain, it's probably Tempranillo. I called Sangio as well, but oh it was still wrong, probably. Um, <laughs> if it was Sangio, that'd be impressive. I liked the first mouthful heaps and wrote down a dozen, then I had another mouthful and that sort of like back end uh, tannin profile. Like I was, this yeah, I was yeah. less into, so downgrade yeah. it back to six. Aromatically, it's kind yummy. of dropping off now. 
and very interesting. Yeah. Uh, 12 bottles for 60. Uh, 3 for 50. 6 for 40. That's a really donkingly good value. Yeah, yeah, man. If it were $5. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy a lot of it. Uh, petit seal. Petit seal. Um, petit Tempranillo Garnacha Tinta Cabernet Sauvignon. Yes, because yeah. there is a bit of um, Cab Sav in, uh, in Spain. Uh, mm. It is now I played in a few different places. Uh, but yeah, just a clearly a really fun little table red. Fun cork printing on there too. Fun cork printing. Yeah, a little like B. That. It's a little B on a D arm. Mm. Uh, maybe it's the honey. Maybe it's, it is the is honey D arm. Uh, it is not the honey D arm. Oh, um, that would have been great. Um, but yeah, uh, so just like uh, four months in French oak, nice little red blend, uh, fun for the table, but shows a lot higher quality than you'd, you'd expect from just literally like a, the, a red blend. These last two wines are crackers. Yeah, excellent so wines. So price point, these last two wines are really aligned with what I kind of colloquially know as Spain is known for its really amazing, great value mm. red mm. wines. Mm -hmm. um, and these two just packaging as well. I know you're not a fan of label, but like the, the bottle's quality, the cork is quality. Yeah. The bottle here again, you know, quality, Thick, cork is fun. quality. Everything's, yeah, everything's But again, just with that last one, the, the label reminds me of the fascinator that a primary school teacher would wear to a country races. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so many great wines here. Um, like, you know, despite your adversity to a couple. Like, but, you know, we will drink that chocolate all day. Like, I love that orange wine. I think it's super delicious. And, of course, we've talked about how lovely the label is. Also cheap. Like, twenty. that last bottle being $25 seems bizarre. Like, that is... These two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These yeah. are like, like if you're you're picking these up, you're grabbing six of each and getting, like, some kind of double yeah. discount or something like that. Yeah. 100%. Sitting on them for the next, like, you know, that, yeah. nine, ten months. That's, that little Grenache, I'd take a whole bunch over and, like, and then... If someone comes over for dinner or like lunch or something like that, it's like glass of that. Everyone's going to be like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One of the week? One of the week, 100%. Week yeah, sure. guaranteed. Absolutely. Guaranteed. Clean, well sweep, done. delicious, delicious uh, Spanish garnacha. Yeah. Garnacha. Cheers, guys. See you next time. See you next time. week.